A lot of DC Comics fans have been wondering what the heck is going on. It feels like the quality has gone down. And then recently, they start announcing a couple of projects that we've been expecting for several years now. Obviously, I'm talking about the Mark Silvestri Batman series and the Jeff Johns JSA ongoing series. Now, what changed at DC Comics? It felt like they were very content to just go out there and hire very untalented writers and throw them on every character but Batman. And even that's kind of sneaking into Batman and let characters like Superman, Wonder Woman, teams like the Justice League, Teen Titans just kind of die due to the lack of quality and overall dissatisfaction of DC Comics customers. I believe I have the answer. I have a source. Now, I've been talking to this person for a very long time. They're a viewer of the channel. And from the very beginning, they have presented themselves as someone that works in like the accounting field. And they have stated multiple times that they have contacts within the Disney and Warner Brothers accounting departments. And this person with those contacts has provided some insight regarding situations at Disney and Warner Brothers. I do not know the people in the accounting offices at Disney and Warner Brothers myself. So do take this with a grain of salt and understand I have not verified directly all the details that have been provided to me. These are secondhand accounts. Obviously, right now, it's a little bit more exciting over at Warner Brothers as we're doing the merger. One of the things that you expect to happen during this merger is that essentially Discovery and the people that David Zaslav is comfortable with are going to slowly take over all the operations all the support stuff going on behind the scenes, including accounting, are going to kind of be merged into what Discovery is doing. I imagine some parts of Warner Brothers will be moved in there, but a lot of those people just aren't going to have a job anymore. These are called redundancies, and that's something that happens with business. And my source is telling me that they are getting to DC Comics a lot faster than I thought they would. I knew eventually they would get to DC and they'd be like, hey, what's going on here? Why aren't you making more money? Tell us exactly what the state of DC Comics is. And apparently that has already happened. This is very interesting news and certainly could explain why DC Comics are all of a sudden bringing in some more high-end talent that could actually generate some buzz and excitement within DC Comics. My source tells me the discovery accounting office, not David Zaslav directly, asked for a management report to be prepared for all print DC comics in all formats, allocating total overhead to each book title to see which were the winners and losers. This request would have went directly to the Warner Brothers accounting office that has been established and has all the historical data regarding this. This is terrible, terrible news for Jim Lee, Marie Javins, and the rest of the team behind DC comics. Their sales have been in the toilet for months upon months. We've documented it heavily right here on the channel. In fact, recently, over half of all the comic books that they published in July of 2022 didn't even make it into the top 100. It's something I've never seen before when it comes to DC Comics sales, and I'm not sure if it's ever happened, and if it has happened, how long ago it was. DC Comics have certainly had some down periods in the market, and they are certainly, outside of Batman, in a big time down period right now. This is terrible timing for Jim Lee, Marie Javins, and the other people at DC, because quite frankly, there's not gonna be a lot of nice things to say for anything outside of really Batman. Maybe Nightwing and a couple of other winners here and there, Flashpoint Beyond, which is still Batman. But for the most part, things are tanking across the board due to bad management, terrible editorial, and just some of the worst creative decisions we've seen in the history of DC Comics. How many mantle swaps have we seen in the last few years? How many characters had sexuality reveals in the last few years? DC Comics has been the Titanic headed for the iceberg and steering into it. And according to my source, the Warner Brothers accounting department got back to Discovery and said, we make these reports every single month and we send them to management which Discovery Accounting replied, you mean you can see what the winners and losers by the reports that you have been preparing and sending up to management? Warner Brothers Accounting obviously said yes, and Discovery asked, how far do they actually go back? To which Warner Brothers stated, just tell me the month and year you want. We have over 30 years with the data that we know of for sure, and we don't know how far back we actually have. Warner Brothers Accounting has a ton of historical data regarding the sales of DC Comics that go back at least 30 years that they are providing to the Discovery Office. The representative then asked, could you please have a sample package of them put together? Somebody will be there to pick them up within the hour. And according to the sources within Warner Brothers Accounting, that person was in fact there and did pick up these reports. That means within the last several weeks, all of DC's failure over the last two years and even longer has fully been exposed. The fact that they destroyed sales on so many characters, including The Flash, Superman, Justice League, Wonder Woman, across the board, the amount of failure going on at DC Comics right now is really unacceptable when you're talking about it from a business perspective. And this all lies on the feet of Jim Lee and Marie Javins, the two people running DC Comics. They have better data than I have, and I know things are messed up. 
They've done nothing significant to kind of change the sales environment that they have in the market today, where customers are essentially abandoning everything but Batman. They've made no big creative changes on any of the major titles. In fact, most of the time, they just kind of double down on what's been failing. Take Wonder Woman, for example. They put Michael Conrad, Becky Cloonan on Wonder Woman, killed her off. Then they brought in Vita Alice, Stephanie Williams to work on the Nubia stuff. And then they also put Stephanie Phillips on a Wonder Woman adjacent book. Shockingly, the sales didn't go up. They actually tanked. And with that, with tanking sales on Wonder Woman, what did they do? They decided this was an opportunity to go all in and do the first real Wonder Woman comic book event that we've seen in like two decades. Not surprisingly, Child the Amazons didn't take off, and the sales ever since have just been tanking, 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 yet they continuously announce more projects for these failed creators. Think about what Stephanie Phillips, who works on Wonder Woman Evolution, continues to get new projects at DC Comics, despite every single one of her comic book projects being a sales loser. I guarantee you none of these are profitable at this point. Her Harley Quinn sales have absolutely tanked, and with that data and that knowledge, Jim Lee and Marie Javins decided... Well, let's make Harley Quinn weekly. Let's do a weekly event story for Harley Quinn. Since sales are so bad, let's tank them even further. It's absolute madness over at DC Comics right now when you think about the creative direction. They've even destroyed some of the sales on Batman. They brought in Gary Whitta, who has had some success in Hollywood, most notably the Book of Eli. I believe he wrote that one. And then he wrote the original script for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. They let him do an awful take on Bruce Wayne Batman in Batman the Fortress, Sales of tank there. Detective Comics, they put Mariko Tamaki, who has no track record of sales success anywhere. She's worked at Marvel, major characters at Marvel, and DC before that. She had done the Wonder Woman series. Everything tanked when she went on it. They put her on Detective Comics, the number two Batman comic book. Initially, sales actually didn't dip. There was some quality there, but by the time they got to a 12-week straight Batman event series, Shadows of the Bat, the sales absolutely bottomed out and didn't recover until she left the title. At least they made a good decision there, bringing in Ram B to replace Mariko Tamaki. But making the decision in the first place was an absolute mistake and something Jim Lee and Marie Javins are going to have to answer for regarding their management of DC Comics and the across-the-board failures that they've had. My source tells me the next day, the Discovery Accounting Office started asking questions. Who have these management reports been sent to? Why are loser titles and characters being kept on in print and extended? How can we double check who authorized all these decisions? Do you know of any common sense reasons for purposefully losing money on DC floppies and so on? Those are the tough questions that are likely to be the final nail in the coffin of Jim Lee's DC Comics career, at least as an executive. I'm sure they'll hire him to do some, some variant covers, maybe to come in and illustrate a comic book here or there if he wants to. I think he's got fuck you money at this point. But they want to know who made these decisions. When these things were failing, who decided to keep them failing and continue on in the current direction? Why didn't you recognize Infant Frontier was failing across the board? Why did you hire all these unfit creators that drove your fan base away? Most importantly of all, why are you purposely losing money on your products that you're selling? Batman certainly makes a lot of money, but this was not the time or place to have these reports go up to the new accounting office that's working for David Zaslov, who's looking to cut money across the board and does not care what he has to cut out and able to reach his bottom line goal when you're losing the company money, your asses are going to be on the line. The hammer is about to drop on DC Comics. It makes perfect sense why all of a sudden this Mark Silvestri Batman book that we've been hearing about, I think originally in 2014, was actually, I think, solicited in 2018, is finally here with us today. They're just hoping and praying that something sticks. We've been expecting this Jeff Johns JSA series for a very long time. People were at one point excited about Wildcats returning. I think it's probably too late at this point, but they need something to be successful. And Jim Lee is likely going to have to answer for his job on why he made so many poor decisions over the last few years. As a comic book fan, I think this kind of sucks that this thing was managed so poorly and so many bad decisions were made that they're not going to be able to take any chances anywhere. We're going to see a ton of Batman. We're probably going to see a Superman or two you know, Justice League, and then not much else. 
It's going to be even more Batman content because that's the only thing Jim Lee and Marie Javins has proven that they can make a sensible decision on. They put so many failed creators across the board that people think DC Comics, outside of Batman, is toxic at this point. How many times do we need to see T. Franklin on anything? Why are Michael Conrad and Becky Cluden still writing comic books at DC? Why hasn't Tim Sheridan been shown the door by now? Why can't they make sensible decisions? Why did they run off all their mainstream talent that were keeping people involved in DC comics? Initial interest in Dark Crisis has been very tepid. Makes sense that they would call it Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths and hope and just pray that the sales actually increase and the interest in the event itself increases. I don't see that happening because I don't think the story has been very good so far. And the tie-ins have been pretty much dreadful outside of the Flash. The day of reckoning is here for DC Comics and their management staff. When will long-term change be implemented based on the information that has been provided to the Discovery Accounting Offices? I'm not really sure. I'm certain that DC Comics and their flailing comic book publishing line isn't the top priority right now. But we know that they know about it. Jim Lee knows that they know about it. Marie Javins knows that they know about it. Everybody involved in the DC management know that they're on the hot seat and they're going to have to answer the questions on why they messed this up so badly. In my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of DC Comics fans, this right now, the here and now, is the worst era in the history of DC Comics as far as quality publishing, quality creative. It's all terrible across the board. I talked to my good friend Josh McDonald, who used to do comic book reviews for BatmanNews.com, lifetime Batman reader, comic book news journalist, really good guy. We talked about it in depth, why this is so frustrating. Jim Lee knew it, Marie Javins knew it, and we talked about it right here. Definitely check this out for more information. And for on a mobile device, there's a link in the video description.